Since you came on board, what are some of the most important initiatives in IT that you've already accomplished? We implemented a new billing system that we went live in June timeframe. And that's uh, a deep collaboration with the finance organization, our product management team, and our engineering team along with IT. And that is the core of how we actually do metering with our end customers and how that actually, because we're a consumption-based model company, everything around how we actually build customers becomes extremely critical. It has to be built with high degree of automation, high degree of integration that it integrates with our financial system. The old system that we had had scaling challenges. And so we worked with our engineering team to build this capability in-house. And now it integrates very seamlessly with Workday. So that's a major accomplishment for it. It's also part of our SOX compliance. It's fully bolted with compliance because it's a very critical revenue generating system. So that sounds like a, like a really important initiative. When you look forward, here we are, you've gone through the IPO, you know, the, the company's growing up fast. What are the most important initiatives that you have before you? So we have a lot of initiatives that are in flight right now. I'll give you some flavor of a couple of them. One is around having the ability to do uh, business in all parts of the world. It requires us to have multi-currency capability implemented. And so we're actively working on that to improving our compliance posture and making the collaboration work between legal, sales ops, and finance, because we do a lot of contracts with a lot of customers. We need like a better workflow. And so we're implementing CLM, Contract Lifecycle Management System, okay. both on the sell side as well as on the buy side, to making sure that any new customer that be on board, it's onboarded with high degree of compliance and speed matters in these things, right? Onboarding a, a new customer, if it takes multiple days to get contracts uh, redline and back and forth that happens, you want all of that in a system. You want that to be in a very seamless manner and a highly collaborative manner. So uh, a, a major por portion of that is very manual today and we're trying to automate the heck out of it. You know, Snowflake on Snowflake is a, a continuous journey. We're putting a lot of workloads in that. And then SOX is another major initiative for us for this next 12 months. We have over 30 some applications that make up the SOX world. And uh, we, we have to be highly compliant on all of them because they touch financials, they touch revenue. A big portion of that needs to be tested and get ready uh, for prime time. So you talked about Snowflake on Snowflake for your IT applications. What are the most compelling applications that other departments are using? The, the sales team is using, they're also taking a lot of the data that sits in Salesforce, customer account data. And uh, in some cases, the customers have not become customers yet, but they're leads. And uh, they want to basically do account scoring or they want to do account enrichment. They want to know where there is renewal opportunities. There's all kinds of opportunities to look at how to grow the business, both onboarding new customers as well as taking the existing customers and figuring out where there's opportunity to scale that. All of that data sits either in Salesforce or some of the complementary systems that make up that data. Right. So they're ingesting all that data inside Snowflake. And obviously they're trying to use Snowflake to do a lot of the predictive forecasting and analytical work that needs to go with it in trying to gain more market share, gain more share with the customer or onboarding new customers that are not uh, you know, onboarded yet. That's interesting because you got Salesforce, then you got Tableau, one of their companies now. So are, they, are, are the salespeople using Tableau as the front end into this data? So Tableau is used at Snowflake more on the visualization side. And we're actively rolling that out as we speak to 
uh, a much broader set of end users in the company who have the same type of use cases. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's more used in Snowflake for the visualization side of the house. You talked before about how Snowflake is kind of customer zero for Snowflake. That uh, must be very exciting, but it also it involves extra risk and extra headaches, p- potentially. How has that gone with you? I mean, is it, is it smooth sailing, or do you really have to do some important feedback to the product groups to, to get things right? I, w- I would characterize that we're still early in that journey. I wouldn't say that we have matured that process to the T. We have some really great initiatives that we are working with our product team, our engineering team, where we definitely are customer zero. And the challenge of that is, in some cases, some of the end users would argue, well, I don't really want to test everything until it's fully ready. But we don't see it that way. We're trying to change the mindset that we have to evangelize and operationalize that internally, even if all the features are not there yet. That gives the feedback to the engineering and the product team to develop a roadmap with with us on what capabilities are not there in the day zero milestone, but will come in coming months or coming quarters. And it systematically creates a roadmap planning with with the engineering and product team. And it keeps a healthy tension between both teams. I think it's super important to do that right. And we have some really exciting new initiatives that we're working with them to really test that model out. It's been a couple of quarters now that we're doing it. And uh, we're maturing that. And that will continue to mature as we uh, grow as a company. What does Snowflake not do that you'd like to see it to do? I mean, you're giving this really elemental feedback. What are you telling these people, you know, from the product divisions that, that you want? So there's a, there are different verticals within, within the product. And for each of those verticals, we are giving use cases, which we are turning on that we see some challenges mm-hmm. and we continuously give that feedback. Uh, a really good example of that is data sharing. If I can get all of my 200 plus applications that I have, um, you know, that I have in production, all to be on data sharing, boy, I would love that because then I would never have to worry about ingesting any of that data and some of the operational challenges that do exist with uploading all that data into my Snowflake instance. So we're working very closely with the product guys to prioritize where we can um, partner with our SaaS companies that we use and the providers to have either an automated connector in place and or data sharing in place so that we have the whole experience to be absolutely seamless. And that reduces a lot of the operational challenges. And it basically is the data cloud story. So it's a roadmap. We know it's going to take time to get everybody there. It's a ton of momentum in the marketplace that the product team is driving. And if I could get all of them to be done with that, like today, I, I would love it. But it's a journey that take, it does take time to get everybody on the same page. I understand that one of the big trends in the industry and with Snowflake itself is that a large number of SaaS companies and enterprises as well are building their applications on top of Snowflake. And obviously you're doing that too internally. So if you would talk about the advantages of that approach, I think it'd be really useful to people. Snowflake automates so much of the operational overhead for software developers so that they can focus on their product They don't have to deal with the operational overhead that you would be dependent on. So that would be the first. Second would be the Snowflake's elasticity allows SaaS companies to deliver very fast performance and speed to their end users, and you only pay for what you use. So what a beautiful model. And then finally, the third would be with our data sharing and our data marketplace, companies that share data with their end customers, in a really seamless fashion, which is uh, a much better solution for everyone. So I would say those would be the three things that I would like to highlight as the advantages of the approach. Earlier in the conversation, you talked briefly about machine learning and some other AI techniques that you're using. And I wanted to ask you to expand on that because 
there's so much AI going on these days. And uh, so if you could just kind of walk through some of the uses, the key uses of AI and, and how it makes a big difference for you. So AI uh, use cases, you know, it's all about anomaly detection, prevention, and action around that. So the two use cases that I like to highlight, one is the insider threat detection. We're doing a lot of work on that front to make sure that we are monitoring any anomaly detection through AI workloads and then have the ability to prevent that real time, stop that real time if something bad is happening, anything malicious that's happening. And uh, the other one that we're trying to work heavily on that in the next coming months is pen testing. So pen testing is like an offensive security posture where you get some hackers to come in and you actually try to break the system in, in a fashion that you know will expose any weakness in your security posture. And we think there's a lot of opportunity where we can actually build AI ML uh, to uh, do that not through humans, but actually do that through an AI mechanism. And so we almost want to do that repeatedly. We almost want to do that across multiple workloads, Mm -hmm. across our ecosystem. So looking at investing in that part of AI uh, use cases that we haven't turned on yet. Now, when you look ahead five years at the data cloud, where do you think this is going? What new technologies and capabilities do you expect to see? And how will it change the landscape for your customers, businesses, government, education? whomever. Yeah, so I would say that I would like to kind of answer that question in three pieces. The first would be that I think there will be an extreme migration to the cloud by the whole industry. I think COVID has been the forcing function now to accelerate that cloud migration even faster than what we had all anticipated. And second is I would say there will be an acceleration of SaaS providers and companies doing their own AI ML. If you think about how many workloads do you actually use AI ML today, you know, the number would be in very small in majority of the companies. In fact, all the companies, I would say that looking five years forward, there will be an increased amount of workloads that will be powered through AI and ML where you're not dependent upon humans to do that, you know, in a sensible manner. And then finally, third, I would say is that to make those first and second things enable, organizations are going to have to rethink of the processes, the tools, the personnel, the employees that they have to have the expertise that's needed that they can handle these two major uh, transitions that are in front of us. I would say that's how I would characterize the next five years in, in this space. So there's going to be a lot of upgrading of skills that's in right. addition to the upgrading of technologies. That's right. And if you don't invest in folks who can actually do the AI ML use cases internally in IT, you're not going to be able to power up those use cases. Well, Sonny, it's been great speaking to you today. And it's just amazing to see all the things that you've done in IT, in data management, in security there at Snowflake in these few months. So thanks again so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by Snowflake. Register for Snowflake's first full-day virtual conference, Data Cloud Summit 2020. Engage with thousands of your peers in any of the eight business and technology summit tracks presented by technology experts and industry data leaders. Be there for the announcement of Snowflake's latest innovations and get access to never before seen demos and customer case studies. Register for free at snowflake.com slash summit.